Bill Ackman is an American hedge fund manager who founded the hedge fund management company Pershing Square Capital Management and is currently the CEO. In this video, we're going to dive into Bill Ackman's investing style. Why? Because Bill Ackman is one of the most controversial figures in the world of finance and investing. He's known for taking very large, high-profile positions in companies and then publicly advocating for changes in those companies. This can lead to conflict between Ackman and the management of the companies he invests in, as well as with other investors who disagree with his opinions. Ackman is also known for being very vocal and media savvy, which can create a polarizing public image. So who is Bill Ackman? William Albert Ackman, better known as Bill, was born on May 11th, 1966. Growing up in New York, he was raised by a Jewish family. His father was a chairman of Ackman Brothers and Singer, a commercial real estate mortgage brokerage company in New York. He attended Harvard for both undergrad and business school and earned an MBA from Harvard. In 1992, Ackman set up Gotham Partners. Gotham Partners was his first hedge fund and he started it with Harvard classmate David Berkowitz. The fund quickly grew from 3 million to 300 million in assets under management. However, the fund closed about 10 years later after a bad investment in a golf course that ultimately ended with investors redeeming their capital. Gotham bought a majority stake in a golf course operator they renamed Gotham Golf. They racked up a bunch of debt snapping up other golf courses. Ackman wanted to merge Gotham Golf and a cash flush real estate company First Union Real Estate Equity and Mortgage Investments to help repay the debts of the golf operator. In 2004, a judge rejected that merger and investors asked for their money back. Ackman wasn't deterred by the failure of his first hedge fund and later that same year, Ackman founded Pershing Square Capital Management with 54 million in assets under management. But let's wind the clock back to one year in 2003. Bill Ackman was virtually a nobody on Wall Street and it was looking like he would remain a nobody. With his world falling apart as he watched Gotham Partners implode, an investigation from the Security and Exchange Commission and Attorney General of New York mounting further pressure, Bill Ackman reached out to this man, Carl Icahn. He wanted to sell Horwood Reality, a company that invests in oil and gas, marketable securities and debt instruments, textile products, protective building systems and real estate investment and development. At the time, the stock traded for about $60, but Ackman believed Horwood was worth $140 a share. So back to Carl Ikan. Ikan is considered one of the most feared investors on Wall Street and was introduced to Ackman when he propositioned him with a deal. Ackman knew the ruthlessness of Ikan, so he wanted his proposed deal to be short and watertight. But Ikan also did his background checks and he knew Ackman was in trouble with the SEC and had investors leaving him. A few of his friends actually warned Ikan to not deal with Ackman. Despite this, the two managed to hammer out a contract in 2003. The terms of the deal would be that Ikan would pay Ackman $80 a share and offered a form of insurance. If Ikan unloaded his shares within three years, the two would split any profit above a 10% return. Ackman went one step further in order to solidify the deal. He included a provision that if the payout became contentious, the loser would pay all the legal fees. And if any payment was delayed, the contract stipulated Ikan would owe Ackman a hefty amount of interest. Initially, everything went to plan. That was until 2004. Ikan merged Horwood with HRPT Properties Trust for $137.90 per share, netting Ikan a tidy profit. Remember the deal was, if Ikan sold the shares within three years and made a profit of 10% or more, he and Ackman would split the proceeds. After waiting a few days, Ackman complimented him. But to be honest, he was more concerned with his share than Ikan's success. There is no denying that Ikan is a savvy individual. A legal dispute erupted with Ikan alleging that because Horwood had been merged and not sold, the agreement was voided. Ackman countered that Ikan didn't have the shares anymore 
and had made money. After losing the legal battle in 2011, Ikan was forced to pay 9 million plus legal fees to Gotham, Ackman's hedge fund. Both of them were billionaires, making this dispute so petty that it became a running joke on Wall Street. However, Ackman had now poked the bear, and this would not be Ikan and Ackman's last encounter. So at this stage, Pershing Square Capital Management had 13 billion in assets under management, and Bill Ackman was beginning to make a name for himself as an activist. He took positions in Sears, McDonald's, and JCPenney. But most notably, he made a $1.5 billion bet on general growth properties. General growth properties were saved from near collapse by Ackman in 2009, and he was a member of the investor group responsible for the subsequent reorganization. He invested $60 million. It was a smart move. He realized the company's assets were worth more than the liabilities, mitigating Ackman's investment risk. Due to the financial crisis and collapse of the commercial mortgage-backed securities market, General Growth Properties filed the largest bankruptcy in US history in April 2009. The company's restructuring plan provided a full recovery for creditors and a recovery for shareholders, which is rare in a bankruptcy reorganization. But I think what really put Ackman on the map was the Herbalife debacle. In December 2012, Ackman famously made a $1 billion short bet against Herbalife, which at the time was about 8% of Pershing Square portfolio. Short selling is a strategy in which an investor borrows shares of a company whose stock price is expected to decline. The investor sells the shares at market price, then buys them back after the price drops and pockets a difference. It's a strategy used by many retail and institutional investors so short selling is nothing new. The difference in Ackman's case was the intense public relations campaign he engaged in to convince the market that Herbalife's business model was in fact an illegal pyramid scheme. According to Ackman, Herbalife was a pyramid scheme masquerading as a nutritional products company which said it was a legal multi-level marketing company. The stock price of Herbalife was $45 at the time Ackman shorted it. It did $4 billion in revenue for 2012 and the company was expecting revenue to reach $10 billion by 2020, a two and a half times increase in 8 years or roughly 12% per year, so not outrageous. Bill Ackman opened his attack on Herbalife with an extremely detailed 342 page slide presentation at a conference in 2012 lasting 3 hours. If this was a presentation in school, he would have nailed it. And why wouldn't he invest so much? He needs the public sentiment to align with his, so the stock price can go down. Yes, I know it sounds like dirty Wall Street tactics, but that's the way it is. You have to look out for yourself and do your own due diligence with your investments. There is a link to the presentation in the description if you're bored and want to read it. The following Monday on Christmas Eve, Herbalife stock fell 42% from $41.57 to a low of $24.24 with the company shedding close to $2 billion in market value. It seems Ackman's tactics, for now, were working. However, Herbalife weren't going to roll over that easy, and they struck back aggressively. Not only that, but within the space of 18 months, the company gained the support of powerful investors such as Daniel Loeb, Ken Mollis, and you guessed it, Ackman's best friend, Carl Ikan. Ikan couldn't resist the temptation of bearing Ackman, so he invested $1 billion worth of stock between December 2012 and February 2013, purchasing nearly 13% of the company's stock at a purchase price of between $6.93 and $39.96. Basically, Ikan counted the $1 billion short which Ackman defended for months, saying the stock would go to zero and accusing the multi-level marketing company of being a pyramid scheme. Herbalife frequently and repeatedly denied those charges. Some people questioned the legality of Ackman's approach in which he deliberately undermined Herbalife's business in an attempt to make the stock price fall to the point where his short position would pay off. The counter-argument to this was that stock promoters engage in this kind of behavior all the time, but on the plus side, trying to drive the stock price up. I guess the only difference is Ackman has a much greater voice than you or I. When he speaks,
people listen, as you'll find out later in this video. Ackman succeeded in briefly driving down Herbalife share price from almost $35 in April of 2013 to less than $13. But the company's share price rebounded strongly, hitting a high of almost $60 in 2019. Ackman threw in the towel on his short position in 2018. His bet against Herbalife was one of the most closely watched and controversial trades of the 2010s. For a time, it seemed that Ackman was on the verge of winning his bet, as Herbalife stock price declined sharply in the years following his announcement. However, the stock eventually recovered and Ackman ultimately lost roughly $760 million, basically a 76% loss, which for a hedge fund manager doesn't look good. To rub salt in the wound, Ikan, on the other hand, told CNBC in March 2018 that he made a billion dollars from his investment in Herbalife. Fast forward to 2020 and Ackman was at it again. This time, Ackman went on an absolute rant during a TV interview on CNBC regarding the pandemic. If you remember, in March 2020, the stock market was in free fall. On March 16, 2020, the Dow Jones fell nearly 300 points. It was the largest single-day drop in US stock market history. This was right after the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 an official pandemic. The US government responded in an unprecedented fashion, passing multiple bills to stimulate the economy. Now you're probably wondering why this has any relevance to Bill Ackman. Well, back in February, Bill Ackman made some bets. He purchased a variety of credit default swaps on investment grade and high yield indexes. Essentially, he made a short bet on corporate bonds. We already know Bill Ackman is an activist. So as you can probably guess, he needed the world to know his extremely bearish perspective on the macro and economic outlook. And he did this on March 18th, 2020 on CNBC in incredible fashion. Is that right? Is that a right policy to still have buybacks when some of these businesses are going to be saved from crumbling? Yeah, so I called the CEOs of a number of our companies, okay, uh, and told them to my concerns, okay, the companies I'm, we're closest to, and to not to stop the buyback programs, to husband resources, to, call, to pull down, draw down their credit lines, uh, because hell is coming, okay? And I, I felt, you know, it's really, I've never had this experience before in my life. The closest I had was the financial crisis where I'm saying, you know, things are coming, you know, bad stuff's coming. Um, but this was a, a feeling like I've never had, like there's a tsunami coming, right? The tsunami's coming in, you feel it in the air, right? The tide starts to roll out, okay? And on the beach, people are playing and having fun like there's nothing going on. And that is the feeling I've had for the last two months. Okay, and, and my colleagues at work, okay, thought I was a lunatic, okay, a lunatic. Okay, I did stuff I've never done before. I've never had more than like 200 bucks in my wallet, okay. I went to the bank and I took out a large amount of money in cash because of this concern. I, I, I made preparations. This is a month ago, okay, more than a month ago. And again, it's all irrelevant what, what's happened in the past. I just think the, the, the bottom line is it's a really simple answer. I'm very confident the White House is considering it. But what's scaring the American people and, and corporate America is the gradual rollout okay, of, of what's going on. We need to shut it down now. Shut it down now. Look, it happens to be spring break. But the, you know, it's kind of analogous. The, the Chinese had their lunar you know, holiday. Right. And so the, the government just extended it. OK, well, it's spring break now. A lot of people are going to take these two weeks off anyway. So extend it for a month, a month at home. OK, how hard is that? Compare that to going to war. Right. Compare that to getting on you know, one of those boats, you know, and storming the beach. It's right. nothing. It's not a sacrifice. OK, it's easy. It's simple. And by the way, the moment the president goes on TV and says, this is what we're doing the stock market will take off because this will set the time frame. Now, by the way, it's, not, it's a month, and then we have to be careful afterwards, okay? We can't just go back to our old ways. We have to follow all the procedures they're talking about now until there's a vaccine, okay? And the good news is capitalism works, okay? Every scientist, uh, drug company in the world wants to save the world, 
okay? And they're hugely motivated reputationally, economically, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm, I say I'm reasonably confident we're going to get a vaccine in the next 12 to 18 months. Do but it's a, not a certainty. Bill, did you hear that report? I did, I did hear it, and it's just further evidence of what I'm telling you. The, the corporate America is in shutdown right now. OK, it just doesn't know it yet or it, it knows it yet, but no one else knows it yet. OK, hotels are going to every hotel is going to shut every one of them. OK, except ones that have government workers in a particular location for whatever reason. That's other than that, they're all going to shut. OK, every airlines are going to stop flying. OK, an airline without revenues. OK, is toast. OK, and you can bridge the airline for, you know, a shorter period of time. OK, but you can't bridge it for years. OK, there at the airline industry goes bankrupt, the hotel industry goes bankrupt, the restaurant industry goes bankrupt, and by the way, private equity goes bankrupt, okay? Blackstone is a fabulous private equity firm, KKR, they do a tremendous job, but every one of their companies has a lot of leverage, okay? Every one of their companies goes bankrupt if this thing rolls out over 18 months. He used strong statements like, hell is coming, and shut it down now, referring to closing the economy. This bet, bolstered by his CNBC interview, netted Ackman $2.6 billion after he exited his bets on March 2023. His invested capital was $27 million. So this was nearly 100x investment and just 5 days after the world is ending CNBC interview. But it gets crazier. Ackman added to his Hilton position using the money he earned from his bets against the market, punctuated by the grim forecast he issued just a week earlier. A week earlier, he had this to say about hotels in that CNBC interview. It's going to zero, along with every other hotel company in the world. Every hotel is going to be shut down in the country. Everyone. This grabbed the attention of some hedge fund managers, accusing Ackman for stoking the market's panic. And people were beginning to question his motivation to drive down markets and increase the value of his bet. Maybe it was, or maybe it wasn't. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I think it's fitting to refer to Bill Ackman as the big COVID-19 short. It was a bet that performed ridiculously well, but it's also a bet that like many of his previous bets, didn't come without controversy. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a video.